swelling over the this kind of uh, swelling uh, was there no so in that cases in this such areas the drinking water will contain uh, iodine of 3 to 16 microgram per liter as well as in the non goitrous area in per day and the value for bovine milk bovine milk means uh, the milk which we take del no buffalo's uh, milk and all so that milk also has um, uh has uh, so that milk also has uh, iodine content that is 11 to 13 microgram per 100 gram okay uh, my internet is unstable so i'll just off my video okay it's the 11 to 13 microgram per 100 gram so per 100 gram of milk will consist of 11 to 13 microgram of uh, iodine and the iodine content of fish okay so we know fish is the richest source of iodine okay seafoods all the seafoods but also it differs there are some uh, fish which uh, we get from the fresh food uh, fresh water and the sea uh, water again there the iodine content will differ okay the sources will differ so the, uh, normally the fish will range uh, the fish the iodine content will range from 28 to 55 microgram per 100 gram and only certain a uh, type of fishes okay they have more amount of iodine in it that is um, the fish like uh, sea coast that which you get from the sea okay so like it has 175 microgram per 100 gram and the iodine content of egg even a egg has a iodine content so the white part of the egg okay it is uh, it is having about 50 microgram per 100 gram that is the white portion not yellow portion but the white portion itself consists of 50 microgram per 100 gram okay for 100 gram of egg if you are having uh, the white part of the egg it will give you 50 microgram of iodine and next based upon the dietary proteins okay uh, like uh, there are also some other uh, uh, sources which are in uh, which are rich in the iodine okay so based on the uh, raw food like in non endemic area uh, 60 to 70% of the iodine needs are met by the iodine present in the diet okay so you know you don't have to worry that how you will take the uh, iodine okay you don't have to take extra for that whatever you will be consuming in your dietary product dietary foods no in all the dietary foods there is some amount of iodine you are receiving so you don't have to worry only in the non uh, only in the goitrous area okay like hilly area or uh, uh, some areas where the always there is a flood disasters and all no such areas uh, the goiter um, um, pre prevalence is more okay so in such areas they need to take extra iodine and all but uh, as a day to day life whatever we are consuming it every food has the iodine so it gives you 60 to 70% of your iodine intake and uh, even water also has the iodine intake in a endemic goiter area okay endemic goiter area means where there is a prevalence of goiter where you see the goiter cases or earlier it has been so those care, those areas only they require um extra iodine because uh, iodine is mainly you know source content from the soil and water so example like for example in a particular area you see there is a lot of rainfall uh, then uh, floods are go, floods then uh, it's very hilly area so the, what happens when heavy rainfall and all comes all the uh, soil will be washed out okay in that water so what happens when you grow the crops crops over there or any um, cultivation you do it does not get that that food supplement will not get adequate amount of iodine okay it will be lack so you, you can see there is a list given in the book uh, on the page number uh, 256 where they have mentioned the goitrous and non goitrous area and there are mentioned some food items foods okay categories of uh, foods here cereals and millets pulses oil seeds vegetables fruits but you know the sources the content should be same right but here you see that in the goitrous area and in the non goitrous area uh, the food uh, the 
the amount or uh, the iodine contents differs because in goitrous area the goitrous areas are those where there is lot of rainfall okay lot of floods are means so as snowfall all this so what happens whenever it happens the sea uh, the uh, the soil will be washed up so it has it, it, the soil itself is having deficiency of iodine over there and even water okay so when you grow something there even the food or the plants who graze on it they will also have less amount of iodine so the people who are consuming there so that's why the food sources which are grown in that areas they will have less amount of um they will they will have less amount of uh, iodine in the uh, sources whereas in the non goitrous area where like uh, where the there is no landslides landslides or snowfalls or heavy rainfall uh, every year in such areas the you see the uh, so uh, the amount of iodine content is quite higher than the goitrous area so and next is um, iodine is also lose uh, lost from the cooking okay so uh, so you know that whenever we cook food lots of uh, micro nutrients will be lost from that okay so it depends upon the cooking method also here there will be loss of the iodine so the studies many studies have been done and uh, said that about 40 to 70% of the iodine is been lost when you are cooking various methods like grilling boiling frying okay steaming stirring the vegetables frying the vegetables all this method it depends upon how much time you are doing it so uh, that much time what happens is the amount of iodine has been uh, lost for example you can say um uh, frying okay so frying will reduce the iodine content by 20% okay grilling it will reduce by 23% so that much percent of iodine is been reduced in whatever the food you are taking it may be vegetables it may be uh, animal food or it may be a plant food so whenever you are cooking any of this method some percentage of the iodine has been lost from it okay hope this much is clear um next i move on to the iodine deficiency disorder so this all is the normal how is the iodine uh, absorption and metabolism done what are the sources what are the recommended value for the iodine in a normal human being so now we move on to the iodine deficiency disorder so we know deficiency is nothing but it is a less so when we take less amount of iodine it leads to some physical and neurological disorders that is associated with iodine deficiency known as iodine deficiency disorder okay so any physical and neurological disorder disorder associated with iodine deficiency are known as the iodine deficiency disorder so it's a major health problem major global health problem it's not only endemic or epidemic but it's also a global health problem okay everywhere this problem exists that about 1.5 million population of the world are at risk of iodine deficiency disorders out of which only 200 million are in india okay and in developed countries you can see the problem of this iodine deficiency disorders has been eliminated because of the uh, conducting uh, on and off conducting the awareness and control program so due to that in developed countries this problem has been reduced or it has been eliminated also and the prevalence of goiter among uh, you can see the more uh, cases are seen among the age group of 6 to 11 years children okay it's about 4% and the proportion is higher in the maharashtra uh, in if you see in india it's more in maharashtra and west bengal okay and then uh, uh, in you you can see that in africa these cases are more okay idd that is iodine deficiency disorders they are likely to be a persistent problem in the uh, uh, this uh, in the country like africa and then in india asia and south america it is decreased with because it is decreased why because of the control programs so there is a national uh, iodine deficiency control control program so which they are implementing implementing so it will reduce uh, it has decreased the um, this problem and in north america and australia there is no iodine deficiency disorders seen okay and now the 
etiology that is what are the causes so the mainly there are two uh, two factors which leads to the iodine deficiency disorder that is environmental factor and intrinsic factor so these are uh, these are the factors which uh, which causes the disease okay iodine deficiency disorder so what are environmental factors so as i already told you environmental factors are uh, any iodine deficiency in the soil just now i explained you right in the soil if there is a deficiency so whatever crops you are, crops you are cultivating over there they will also have the iodine deficiency and the person who, who stays in that area and they are consuming that food they will have deficiency of iodine so usually this is um, seen because uh, why the soil deficiency occurs because of high rainfall snow and flooding what happens there is a increased loss of soil iodine which has often been already uh, washed out along with the uh, floods and all so due to that whenever you are growing there uh, or rearing the uh, animals they will also have the iodine deficiency okay so iodine exists in large quantity in the sea water so especially when uh, the areas which are near to the sea okay or sea water is near to that so uh, the sea water con consists of 50 to 60 microgram per liter of um uh, iodine okay so in this such areas there is no prevalence of any iodine deficiency disorder because the content whatever you grow there or whatever you uh, cultivate in that area they have good amount of iodine in them any vegetables any okay um, any plant food anything whatever you consume it has good amount of iodine because the soil is rich in iodine here okay so that's why the food also whatever you are cultivating has the iodine nutrients so that's why the chances of getting iodine deficiency in such areas is very less then iodine deficiency area they have water iodide level of below 2 microgram per liter and in india the level will range from 0.1 to 1.2 microgram per liter as in if for example in the city uh, in the like delhi uh, the water iodine level uh, is 9 microgram per liter and it is not iodine deficiency okay so this this water if you consume you may not get any uh, deficiency iodine deficiency because uh it is having some amount of iodine whereas the areas where the water level of iodine is very less like 2 gram or in a uh, very less like in a points these areas you need a iodine supplement also okay because it is having already so there may like, the children or the mother or the pregnant mother or the adults may suffer with iodine deficiency disorders okay next what are the goitrogens so if there are goi if you consume goitrogens also the goitrogens are nothing but they are the substance that will interfere with the iodine metabolism okay so the goitrogens are the goitrogens are the substance which which will affect the uh, iodine metabolism in the body so already i explained you absorption and metabolism no so when you take this goitrogens in the from the food or from the uh plant food or any foods what happens they have certain um uh, these chemicals okay so which uh, or substance which will affect the synthesis and production of the um, hormones t3 and t4 because they will affect the enzyme there are some enzymes uh, like uh, oxidase thyroid peroxidase and 5 dio or iodinase these are the enzymes which help in the uh, production of this thyroid gland so it, what happens it will cause the deficiency of this enzyme this goitrogens when you take in excess okay so depend upon that uh, there are three levels or classes has been categorized so class 1 is uh, the goitrogens like thiocyanide isothiocyanide and cyano uh, cyanogenic glycosides this will inhibit the uptake by the thyroid gland okay and then thiourea thionamides and flavonoids they are in the class 2 which will affect the stage of organification and coupling in the process of thyroxine synthesis so in different process different uh, substances or the goitrogens will affect so according to that they have given the classes so in the class 3 excess iodine and lithium which will interfere at the stage of proteolysis and uh, utilization of thyroxine in the body so these goitrogens they are seen in many foods 
okay especially the plant foods like uh, tapioca okay uh, then sorghum sorghum is the jowar we take no that uh, then finger millets okra sweet potato almonds peaches soya beans bamboo shoots uh, then uh, some beans cabbage cauliflower they all have certain amount of phytogens so when you take this food okay in excess or regularly what happens the goitrogens will affect the synthesis of the thyroid hormone at different level or different classes so they have different uh, different substances are present in each food okay but you don't have to worry this when you cook okay when you cook or boil the food what happens this uh, goitrogens get inactivated also okay they are lost from the food so it's not like you have to wash it properly cook it properly and then if when you have it will inactivate the um, uh, this goitrogens during the cooking process and uh, people who live in the goitrous area should avoid the goitrogens so you know uh, the people who are already uh, chances higher chances of getting the goiter so they have to completely avoid such kind of food okay because if they take more goitrogens then again it will affect badly to them and the people who are staying in the non goitrous area where there is no risk of goiter so in that case they can take this kind of food in moderate amount not in excess amount excess means you should not consume daily cabbage daily cauliflower okay you can take alternate in so once in a week cabbage once in a week cauliflower it will not harm your body but if you are taking regularly then the goitrogens may harm and in moderate amount it should be consumed so goitrogens food they should be not considered as a staple food so what is staple food staple food is nothing but uh, when when you take as daily uh, that food is must in your diet okay like rice and that way that is called staple food so this food should not be considered as staple food okay we should try to avoid we can take um, alternate days or once in a week next is next is intrinsic factors so intrinsic this this all whatever discuss is comes in the environmental factors so environmental factors mainly is uh, the iodine deficiency of soil and water okay so that itself will cause the iodine deficiency disorder next is the intrinsic factors intrinsic means within our body okay so within our body there are some factors which may affect the uh, uh, production of um, this uh, means absorption and metabolism of this iodine so these intrinsic factors include some of the congenital defect congenital defect means uh, from the birth itself the child may suffer with some disorders or some developmental defect or growth and developmental defect okay so that itself uh, when the growth is not complete uh, they may occur some congenital defects in the body anatomical or okay so that may leads in the hormone uh, hormonal synthesis and secretions it will be affected and that can also leads to the goiter so it can affect that the thyroid gland is not formed properly okay um, then there is no chances that how much ever you take iodine or whatever you take iodine the it will not uh, produce any t3 and t4 hormone so and also there will be uh, chances of uh, uh, this uh, result that will leads to the goiter or any other problem in the children okay it's intrinsic factors uh next is spectrum of uh, uh iodine deficiency disorder that is uh, what is this what are the consequences of iodine deficiency disorder okay so there are uh, various consequences of iodine deficiency disorder uh, first like uh, for example we will take one is stillbirth okay so what is stillbirth uh, that uh, in the human uh, you know the thyroid and the pituitary are developed uh, by the end of the first 12 weeks of the gestation so when the mother is pregnant the first 12 week only uh, of the gestation the thyroid and the pituitary gland is formed okay and the hypothalamus will develop by the uh, by the age of uh, by the gestational age of 10th and 30th week okay and between 18th and 20th second week the tsh can be detected in the blood in the neon in the fetus 
okay so this pituitary it will stimulate the thyroid gland okay and thus the t4 and t3 will uh, t4 it will stimulate and the t3 will remain low and because of the 5 do iodinase enzyme okay which is which removes the inner five uh, ring five at iodine atom to to reverse the t3 level okay which has no hormonal activity but just before the birth this happens in the womb okay gestational age but before the birth what happens is there is a decline in this enzyme that is 5 iod uh, um 5 do iodinase enzyme which is acting on the outer ring of the uh, outer ring so the biologically active t3 level rises rapidly and reverse t3 will fall down so this is the normal mechanism okay which will help in the transition from intrauterine to extrauterine life but if anything wrong happens during this process then it will leads to the stillbirth okay so this is one of the consequences of uh, iodine deficiency during pregnancy if the mother has then the child also may get some problems or the some com com complications then other problems uh, you can see the table given in the page number uh, 260 so they have given in fetus what are the uh, Uh, problems are the consequences due to iodine deficiency okay like uh, fetus may be aborted stillbirth can occur any congenital anomalies then increased perinatal mortality increased infant mortality neurological cretinism can occur mixed edematous cretinism psychomotor defect anything can occur in the fetus okay before the birth itself then in the neonate after the birth you can see there may occur neonatal goiter neonatal chemical hypothyroidism and in children and adults uh, uh, it can it can lead to the deficiency can lead to goiter juvenile hypothyroidism and some mental disorders okay mental functions low iq uh, psychomotor defects and in adults you can see the goiter with complications hypothyroidism impaired mental function all are the consequences of the um of the iodine deficiency in different age group that is in fetus neonate children and adolescents and the adults so uh, this iodine deficiency the main problems uh, or the main complications of this iodine deficiency are like it can cause in children you can see cretinism and in adults you can see the goiter hypothyroidism and psychomotor defect so these are the main uh, disorders which you can see in the children as well as in the adults okay in children you can see the disease like cretinism in adults you can see uh, the disorders like goiter hypothyroidism and psychomotor defects so now we move on to what is goiter okay we will study one by one uh, what do you mean by goiter what do you mean by cretinism okay so goiter you can see the picture itself there is some enlargement over the neck okay so it's defined as a non neoplastic non inflammatory and non toxic enlargement of the thyroid gland so here the butterfly thyroid gland which you have seen no butterfly shape it is very small okay but when this deficiency occurs it will enlarge inflammation occurs so it is a non neoplastic means it's not a tumor okay and uh, it's non inflammatory also it it won't spread okay only that part will be enlarged and it's a non toxic enlargement of the thyroid gland which is mainly caused cause due to the deficiency of the thyroid hormone and excess amount of thyroid stimulating hormone which leads to increase in the size of the thyroid cells okay so this is the goiter so this goiter is painless it is uh, painless it is not painful it is painless and it can lead to but uh, it may not cause any complication but sometimes due to the enlargement of the thyroid gland it can cause a pressure on the trachea and leads to the breathing difficulty um how can we solve this problem is administration of iodine uh, or treatment with iodine the person will get completely all right okay and the prevalence of this goiter is most common in the so it's common in the um adolescents in the younger adults and in the school age children and females are more affected than the males so you can see here picture um here is a goiter this is the normal structure of the thyroid gland 
okay so you can see there is no enlargement it's very small size but when it when the person suffers with goiter what happens is the thyroid will get enlarged the cells will get enlarged okay and then uh, that leads to the goiter and you will see swelling over the uh, under the neck so that's about goiter so next is the cretinism so the cretinism uh, is a congenital iodine deficiency syndrome known as cretinism it's a condition present at birth which is marked by so this is a congenital defect okay so it is present at birth itself in the usually you can see in the neonates or the infants so this condition is present at the birth which is mainly characterized by the physical and mental uh, defects due to insufficient thyroid hormone um, th uh, Uh, thyroid hormone, which is caused by insufficient insufficient di dietary iodine during the pregnancy. Okay, so this is uh, a congenital defect. Okay, uh, cretinism is a congenital defect which is present at birth, which may be characterized by physical and mental development defect. Okay, it is mainly due to the thyroid deficiency hormone. Okay, then what are the causes for this? there are two main reasons for cretinism cretinism okay that is lack of thyroid gland and failure of the thyroid thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone and the iodine deficiency in the diet so mother if she takes a, a, a diet which has less amount of iodine uh, during pregnancy and she suffers the iodine deficiency there are higher chances that the baby also may get the iodine deficiency disorder or if she may he may get the congenital cretinism or also called as congenital iodine deficiency syndrome so now the types of uh, cretinism so there are mainly two types of cretinism neurological cretinism and mixed sedimentous this this cretinism is divided according to the clinical features okay so in neurological cretinism you can uh, see by the name only neurological means it is affecting the Uh, brain or in the nervous system so the neurological uh, uh, criticism what happens it is characterized mainly by the uh, growth and uh, growth and development retardation deaf mutism okay it will uh, mental retardation can occur severe mental retardation with squint motor spasticity can be seen okay spastic diplegia can be seen uh, in the child uh, the gait will be uh, disturbed uh then uh, the reflexes will be diminished and uh, a stunting of growth won't be there in this but there may be growth and development retardation okay so this is neurological criticism and next one is mixed sedimentous cretinism so mixed mixed sedimentous cretinism it is mainly characterized by growth and development uh, uh, growth and development retardation then incomplete maturation of facial expression thickened and dry skin small and dry hair eyelashes and eyebrows mental retardation okay uh, of comparatively lesser intensity of neurological criticism delayed sexual maturation and other clinical manifestations of hypothyroidism whatever is seen can be seen in the mixed edematous criticism so this neurological criticism no it is seen in the uh, neurological criticism it's mainly uh, seen Uh, with the uh, environmental deficiencies okay environmental factors so as i already mentioned you the the environmental factors where the soil is deficiency of the iodine in such areas the neurological uh, criticism can be seen whereas the mi mixed sedimentous criticism is generally seen in the uh, uh, developed if the 